In this lesson, we'll talk about one of the concepts that can show up on harder word problems in the executive assessment quantitative section and possibly integrated reasoning sections, overlapping sets. So here we have a basic Venn diagram to help us define how overlapping sets work. So you're going to have four possible groups. You can have group A, you can have group B. You can have your overlap, which is also known as the intersection. And of course, you can have those that are neither that are not in group A nor group B. So you have the Venn diagram as a visual representation of what's happening, but you're not going to want to use a Venn diagram to solve on the executive assessment. It just takes too long. But understanding how the groups work will help us work through what is known as the group equation for overlapping sets. So our basic group equation for two groups is going to basically take advantage of what we just defined in the Venn diagram. We know that our total number of people, what is known as the union, is equal to those in group A plus those in group B minus those that are in the, interlap, in the overlap, which is known as the intersection technically, plus those that are in neither of the two groups. Because if Bill is in group A and also in group B, I count Bill twice, which is why I have to subtract out the overlap. I want to count each person only once in the total union of the two groups. You can also solve for group X alone, so say group A, those that are only in group A but not in group B, by taking those in group X and subtracting out the overlap or intersection. So if I have 20 people in group A, but five people in the overlap, then I know that I have 15 people that are only in group A because I want to subtract out those that were in both group A and group B. So now let's take a look at an example. If 90% of the 400 students at Beavis High take either biology or physics, and the number of students taking only physics is 25% greater than the number taking biology, how many students take biology? So you can see this articulated with a Venn diagram that I would not actually want to use on the executive assessment, but we'll use it just for informational purposes as we work through this example. So we've got physics on the left-hand side, we've got the overlap in the middle, and we've got biology on the right-hand side. And they told us implicitly there are no neithers. So we can immediately take 90% of the 400 students at Beavis High by taking 0.9 and multiplying that by 400. Now recognize that's 10% off of 400, so I could also just subtract 40 from 400 to potentially make the mental manipulation a little bit faster. But our total without the neithers, meaning those that are physics or overlap or biology only, are going to be 360. So we know that 360 is equal to those in physics plus those in biology minus the overlap that are counted twice. So our only physics is physics minus the overlap. So we know that the number of students taking only physics, so physics minus the, the overlap, is 25% greater than the number taking biology. And we can just articulate that as B. So physics minus the overlap is equal to 1.25B. So then, since we know that our sum of 360 is equal to biology plus physics minus the overlap, we know that 360 is equal to B plus 1.25B. And so then we have that 360 being equal to 2.25B. In the exam, I'd probably write this as 9 fourths B instead of 2.25, but if you divide by 2.25 or multiply the whole equation by four and then divide by nine, you'll discover that B, the number who take biology, is 160 using the group equation as opposed to trying to fill in everything for a Venn diagram, which is probably just not an efficient enough process for this exam when you encounter a word problem involving multiple groups. So the most complex that the executive assessment is going to get when it comes to overlapping sets is three groups. And here is our three group equation for overlapping sets, basically extrapolating the logic that we had before. So the total is going to be equal to group one plus group two plus group three minus those that are in exactly two groups because I've counted those people twice and I want to only count them once. And then I subtract out two times all three groups because if somebody's in all three groups, I've counted them 
three times, and I only wanted to count them once, so I have to subtract them twice, hence the minus two times the number of people that are in all three of the groups. Plus, of course, those that are in none that have been counted in none of the groups, because there's always the capacity for there to be a none in a situation. So, our definitions. Group whatever is just part of that independent categorization. So that's going to be group one, whatever it is, group two, group three, whatever it may be, and that includes the overlaps. Now, exactly two groups is included in exactly two independent categories. They're not three. And all three are only those that are in all three independent categories. So now let's take a look at an example of a three group equation. So we've got Barrel's garden of 30 plants, 20 of which are flowering, 17 of which are perennials, and 8 of which are succulents. We then find that 8 of Barrel's plants are flowering succulent perennials, and 5 have exactly 2 of these listed qualities. How many of her plants are neither flowering, perennial, nor succulent? So basically, we've got our group 1, group 2, group 3. We know there's an exactly 2 groups, and there's an all 3 group. And we're being asked for the nuns, those that are neither flowering, perennial, nor succulent. So we set up our equation. 30 is the total. 20 are flowering, so that's group one. 17 are perennials, that's group two. Eight are succulents, that's group three. And then we know that five have exactly two of these listed qualities, so that's minus five. And eight are flowering succulent perennials, which means that they have all three qualities. So we've got to do two times eight that have all three uh, qualities, plus the nuns that we're solving for. Then we discover that 30 is equal to 45, because if I add 20 to 17, I get 37. 37 plus 8 is 45, minus 21, because minus uh, 5 minus 16 is minus 21. And then plus our nuns, we then have to just combine like terms. We discover that 30 is equal to 24 plus none. We subtract 24 from each side of the equation and discover that those with none of the characteristics are six plants. Again, this is going to be really complex and really time consuming if you try to do it with a Venn diagram. Probably not something that you'll see in the first half of your executive assessment under any circumstances, but it is the type of concept that could show up on a harder second section. And this is definitely the type of logical problem that they would use as a differentiator as you try to approach that score of 160 that is really kind of the high-end differentiator for this test. So now let's talk about the secondary group equation for multiple categories because there's another one here too, which is that our total is equal to those that are in exactly one category, plus exactly two categories, plus all three categories, plus those that are in none of the categories, if there is a none. So this can be extrapolated to any number of characteristics. So we know that there are savvy shortcuts in solving for complex group word problems, and so you have to be aware of this secondary group equation because you can't be in one exactly one category and exactly two categories and exactly three categories at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So when you know that they're mutually exclusive, you can just sum them simply. And that's really quite helpful when you start getting into the weeds and are like, oh, there's so many ways to solve for these different things. Maybe you don't have to for some of the most complex three group equations that you'll see. So speaking of which, let's head on over to the whiteboard and take a look at a sample complex three group equation problem or two to see how all of this can manifest itself and be beaten in the executive assessment quantitative section. So here we have quite a table, right? That's going to be a ton of information. There's got to be a way to work through this efficiently. But we're going to set up our scratch pad as we do for all problem solving questions. We've got A, B, C, D, E, and we can see we're being asked for those that like none or one of the three toppings on their hot dogs when we skip to the end. So we're looking for the number like none or one topping. And we've got simple answers, so I might write those out as well. We've got six, we've got 16, we've got 18, we've got 22, 
and we've got 197, which seems like a bit of an outlier, but we're gonna look at that in a moment. So starting from the beginning, we learned that everyone in a group of 100 coworkers, okay, so our total is equal to 100, and that means we can eliminate that outlier of choice E now, because we're like, there's not 197 coworkers. How could there be an 197 that like none or one topic? So rather than trying to break down this entire table, I'm gonna go for the easiest possible equation that we talked about pertaining to three groups. So it says that everyone in a group was asked which of the three toppings they like on their hot box. And we're looking for none or one. So I want to focus on where the total is equal to those that like all, plus those that like two, plus those that like one only, plus those that like none of the topics. Because it's gonna be easier to figure out what the number of alls are and what the number of two exactly's are. So our, our total is of course 100. The alls are right here at the bottom of the table, 25. Now, the two onlys, well, if we've got mustard and relish as equal to 43, we know that 25 of those, like all of them, so our only, is gonna be 43 minus 25, and 43 minus 20 is 23, 23 minus five is 18. Then we've got our mustard and celery salt. So that's gonna be 45 minus, again, the 25 that are included in all three. So the only, one, the only two here, and exactly those two of mustard and celery salt, are gonna be 20 people. And then we've got our last of the three possible two condiment or topping um, combinations of relish and celery salt, and that's equal to 40, again, minus the 25, which gives us 15. So our two onlys is going to be the sum of those three two groups. So that's going to be 20 plus 15 is 35. 35 plus 10 is going to be 45. 45 plus 8 is going to be 53 that are two only. So we've got 25 plus 53 plus the one only plus the nuns. And now I'm not solving for them individually. Remember that that's one of the big ways that the exam can trick you at the higher end as well is I'm not trying to solve for everything. I want to solve for exactly none or one, and that's just none plus one. So now we've got 100 is equal to 25 plus 50 is 75, 78 plus one only, plus the nuns. We don't care about the distribution. We just subtract out 78 from each side of the equation. We discover that 22 is equal to one only, or none. And the correct answer is choice D in a by far more efficient approach than trying to figure out everything in one of those three circle Venn diagrams. Remember, this exam is really testing efficiency because it's a test of managerial competency. And you don't necessarily need to figure out all of the things that are on a work site. You just got to get the job done that's being sought. So that's what this question is testing from an exam theory perspective. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more example as data sufficiency. And in this case, we're testing probability in conjunction with overlapping sets, which certainly can happen because probability overlapping sets can be kind of cousin concepts on this test. So we'll start with what we know. And we know that Caroline has applied for two jobs this week, one at Carmine Corp and the other at Doodling. Is the probability that she gets one of the two jobs greater than 0 0.5? So is the probability of one job at least greater than 0 0.5. Of course, this is a yes, no data sufficiency, and we're gonna just box that off. And what we need is how we solve for an at least probability. And we know that if we take the probability of the possible outcomes, well, we know that our total probability is always one. 
So one is going to be equal to the probability of C plus the probability of D minus the probability of both happening plus the probability of neither happening. So in order to figure out if she gets at least one of the jobs, well, we need to know just this part, the C plus D minus both versus the neither. So what I really need is either the probability of C plus D minus both or just the neithers, because if I get the neithers, that tells me as well by process of elimination. So condition one says that the probability that Caroline gets only the Carmine job is 0 0.3. So that means that the C minus both probability is equal to 0 0.3. But by itself, that doesn't tell me what the probability is for the doodle job. But I know that if the doodle job is going to be, and since this is an at least, we've got to have greater than, well, I guess not greater than or equal to. It's got to be exactly over 0 0.5. So we need to know at this point, is doodle tw uh, 0.2 as a probability or not? But we don't have that yet. So we can eliminate choices A and D because condition one by itself is not sufficient, but we're certainly working our way towards sufficiency. Then we get the probability that Caroline gets the doodle job is 0.25. So the D probability is equal to 0.25. So that's equal to the D probability or both. So by itself, that doesn't tell me anything because we don't have the Carmine probability. But when we combine the two, because we know that we subtract out the boats here, we know that the C or D probability is going to be equal to 0.55. And of course, that's greater than 0.5. And this allows us to say the answer is always yes algebraically, which is always our preferred method for data sufficiency problems. So go ahead and practice some probability style questions on your own, both problem solving and data sufficiency to improve on this aspect of word problems on the executive assessment.